Have you all out there ever seen a movie that you see at a particular point in your life and you feel like the film's just speaking to you and it kind of hits you to your core? Well, I recently saw a movie like that. What's going on, everybody? And welcome back to my channel, Movie Files. Elliot back again with a brand new movie review. And today we're talking about a film that made a very big slash at the film festivals last year. We're talking about the new romantic comedy drama by the name of The Worst Person in the World, which I got a chance to check out courtesy of Neon. Really excited to share my thoughts with you all and let you know why I think this film is worth checking out in this spoiler-free review. Before we break it all down, make sure you're checking me out on all my other social media accounts. If you're new to the channel, we're on the quest to 20,000 subscribers, so if you want to be a part of the community, make sure you're subscribed and you're hitting that notification bell. And as you can see on the screen now, if you enjoyed this review, well, make sure to give the video a thumbs up and also share the review, but more importantly, let's talk about this film. Once you've seen it, what did you think about the narrative, the performances, the direction? What chapters were your favorite? What were some things that didn't work for you all? And everything in between let's talk about it in the comments below so I just want to get this out of the way I'm gonna start off my positives as I always do I want to talk about the filmmaking of this movie starting off with our director Joachim Trier and his collaboration with a cinematographer Casper Tuxen was incredible to me it felt like at points I was watching a documentary because everything just felt so real and honest and the way that they used the close-ups the movement of the camera just felt so perfect the way that they kind of was able to capture the relatability of these characters to me it was just a great job from both again the filmmaker the cinematographer the score the look the feel the essence of the film really kind of worked for me in this movie but uh, speaking of things that worked for me I want to transition into the performances starting off with our supporting characters our main leads to love ventures I'm talking about Axel and Evine who were incredible I found myself rooting for both characters because I understand how our main character Julie could be in love with these two people at the particular points in her life and they they both did a great job with with our main lead, but also individually speaking, they both get a moment to shine. I thought they were absolutely fantastic. But speaking of moment to shine, uh, and before I talk about our lead actors, I just want to put a photo on the screen now. I mean, come on, this, this she looks almost like I did. I'm talking about the lead of this movie who goes by the name of Julie, played by Anna Rians, who I have to say was one of the most relatable characters I've seen in the movie in a very long time. We follow her at these particular points in her life, and this, the movie is broken into 12 chapters as she's trying to figure out what to do in college, how to navigate her relationships, how to navigate her relationships with her, her family, like her father, womanhood, life and death, just to name a few. And I felt like Renata played all of those things perfectly in my opinion. The title may be a bit misleading and it's kind of purposeful because Throughout the film, we're watching Julie making these decisions that she feels as though these decisions are making her the worst person in the world, but it doesn't make her the worst person in the world. It just makes her human, and that's what makes her so relatable. She can be fun and happy. She's exciting, hopeful, but she can also be mean and rude and make bad, regretful decisions. But then again, that's what makes her so relatable. She's a human being and we all make mistakes. We all have our highs and lows and that's what I really loved about what she was able to bring in this role and I thought that she was absolutely fantastic in this movie. One of my favorite performances that I've seen in a long time. But I wanna kinda of transition a little bit into the story without giving too much away. As I had mentioned, this is broken into 12 chapters including an epilogue. Some of the chapters are a little bit longer than the others but then again, I felt like it was so brilliant how they were able to weave in this narrative and tell this two-hour romantic comedy drama and there were some moments within this four-year span that we see through Julie's life that kind of stood out to me without giving too much away I think of chapters like chapter two or chapter four and five 8, 11, 12, so I mean pretty much all the chapters, right? But no, in all seriousness, I really felt like the topics that were tackled in those chapters touched me in such a way on a personal level, I literally felt like I was in her shoes. Also, I want to kind of highlight some of my favorite moments in the film without getting into the specifics. There are two moments where the creative choices were just so brilliant. There's a scene where we have time that stops, and there's another moment where our characters are in and in indulging themselves in drugs, and it's just those two scenes to me, again, just speaks to the filmmaking of this movie but lastly I don't want to leave out this movie hit me to an emotional level that I did not expect coming and it, I don't know if it had to do with I was watching it like at 12 at night I was watching it at home on my computer it was a snowstorm and the older I've gotten the more emotional I've gotten with certain films especially when I can relate to the characters but there's a moment in chapter 11 and 12 where I was just broken in pieces and when you all see the film you'll know exactly what I'm talking about so I laughed I cried I related to the character this is such a great film but I do have some criticisms that I want to kind of share with you all this film does clock 
clock in at about two hours. And if you include the eight minutes of credits, two hours and eight minutes roughly. And at no point, never bored. I was never not invested in the story. But I do feel like certain chapters were more integral to the story and other chapters didn't didn't feel like it needed to be there and they were just kind of could have been cut or combined into one big chapter but that's just a small nitpick my only really big gripe and it's really not a big gripe is how the film ends and what I mean by that is the ending makes sense to the narrative what they were kind of conveyed which is day-to-day -day, everyday life you just move on with life but there were and this is the epilogue I'm speaking of there were the previous two chapters chapters 11 and 12 had such emotional satisfying conclusions that I wish that we could have found a way to have that in an epilogue and the epilogue's not bad I just feel like the prior moments were more emotionally impactful for me and I would have loved to have that impact be the last moments of the film so that's kind of my only issue that I have with the film before I give you all my overall score of this movie if you haven't already make sure to like the video share the video leave your thoughts in the comments and of course subscribe to the channel overall this story about the life of a young woman navigating her struggles to find her career path, love, family, womanhood, life, and death was one of the most relatable films I've seen in recent memory. Like I said, this film hit me at a particular point in my life that I can really kind of resonate with the character and kind of really relate to the character. And it may not resonate with you or sit with you the way it did with me, but I'm really excited to kind of revisit the film to kind of see where I stand with it. But as of right now, this was a great film, and I highly recommend you all give it a watch. With that being said, I'm going to give The Worst Person in the World a 4.5 out of 5. Now, as I'm recording this video, it has hit international markets, but it will be available domestically in the U.S. on February 4th in L.A. and in New York. But then on February 11th, it will have a wider release. And if you get the opportunity to see it, again, it might not be for everyone. I feel like this film kind of hits at a certain age group, like when you're in your late 20s, early 30s. But I think people that can that are older than that can relate to it, and even people that are younger, but I really enjoyed this film, and again, that's why I gave it a 4.5 out of 5, but again, that's just my thoughts, I want to know your thoughts once you've seen the film, again, pros, cons, favorite chapters, what moments resonated with you, what moments didn't work for you, let's talk about it all in the comments below, if you stuck around to this point in the review, I appreciate you, again, make sure before you leave to like, share, comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bell, hope you all enjoyed the review, hope you're staying safe, as you can see on the screen now, subscribe to my channel, check out my other content. We'll catch you in the next video.